The Chicago Blackhawks win their home opener. It was the Madhouse on Madison yet again. Jay Cutler is in the news for getting arrested on a DUI. And just how much will Ryan Poles cook before the trade deadline in a couple of weeks? We're going to talk about all that and more right after the intro. What's the word, Chicago sports fans? Welcome to another episode of Shot Town Sports Central. It's me, your boy, Big Kev, in the building, holding it down for the entire squad and sing it with me. Da 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 da. The Chicago Blackhawks looked really good last night in their win over the San Jose Sharks. Four to two was the final victory. And listen. Two points is cool, but they were dominant the entire game, mainly because the San Jose Sharks could not keep their hands to themselves. Seven penalties, which led to the Chicago Blackhawks scoring two power play goals, two other goals. Uh, the stars of the game took care of business. And listen, these guys, the Blackhawks look pretty good. I ain't going to eat right. They look pretty decent. I got to watch a little bit of the game uh, while I was at work. Connor Bedard with two assists. Taravian with two assists. And Foligno with a goal. The Blackhawks just jumped all over these guys in the first inning. Four minutes and 20 seconds into the game with their first goal. And then right before the end of the first period, they scored their second goal. And then 43 seconds into the Second period, they scored their third goal, and they ended up going up four to one within two minutes and nineteen seconds into the third period, and they held on for the victory over the San Jose uh, Sharks. They did lead in shot, shot attempts with 27, 13 hits, and only six penalty minutes for the Chicago Blackhawks, which is why they were able to take care of business because the San Jose Sharks were just all over the place, giving the white the Blackhawks. A lot of time on the ice with power play opportunities. Now, they only converted on two out of seven power plays, but we will take the four to two victory for the Chicago Blackhawks in the Madhouse on Madison. And listen, if you want to hear more about the Chicago Blackhawks victory, head on over to Chicago Blackhawks Central with my man Skokes, and they're going to tell you how it went. All right, moving right along. My man Jay Cutler, the greatest quarterback in Chicago Bears history was arrested in Tennessee for being drunk and having a gun and disrespecting the po po I ain't even mad at Cuddy we already know he was a gunslinger anyway when he was out here in Chicago according to NBA uh, NBC Chicago 5 NBC 5 Chicago the former quarterback was arrested and is facing charges in Tennessee Cutler was charged with multiple counts, including the DUI and possession of a handgun while under the influence, the Franklin Police Department told NBC. Other charges include failure to exercise due care to avoid a collision and compl implied consent. Details surrounding what happened led up to the arrest were not immediately re uh, released. Now, we already know what Cuddy meant to the Chicago Bears, my man, uh, you know, in 12 seasons, he did throw for 35,000 yards, 227 touchdowns, and his time with the Bears was 23,000 yards and 154 touchdowns. So far, right now, until Caleb Williams catches him, he's the best Bear the Chicago Bears have ever seen, and I ain't going to even front free Cuddy. Can't hold that, man. Free him. I know he got divorced. My wife looking at me crazy. So I was like, he's divorcing. He's been, whatever. Free that man. He's struggling. Let that man go to uh, rehab or something. All right, so moving along, I got a question for y'all. How much do you guys think my man's Ryan Poles is going to cook at the trade deadline? We've been talking about it all week here on this channel, and we already know what people are thinking. We already know that people are thinking that they should go after Miles Garrett or Max Crosby, but perhaps, perhaps they're not going to go after either one of those guys. According to insiders, the, the Bears are looking at Several positions, one of them being the interior offensive line and another one possibly, possibly being a running back, which is kind of confusing. I thought the running back room was one of the strengths coming into the season, but it doesn't look like Khalil Herbert is going to really get much playing time on in this offense with Shane Waldron. It doesn't look like he just measures up to what they're expecting from the position. Uh, your boy Swift is out there doing his thing. And uh, Roshan Johnson is a good short yard back, 
short yard is back. So they, and Travis Homer hasn't he's been injured, so he's not going to play either. So maybe they move on from Herbert, bring in another player, possibly trade for maybe an Alvin Kamara out of New Orleans. Who knows? But that remains to be seen. Uh, a couple of players that they could also be looking at is um hold on, that's my is uh, Aziz Ajilari out of the New York Giants. He got three sacks and five quarterback pressures and four quarterback hits this season so far. We know the Giants are going to be out of the playoff conversation eventually. Maybe they move on from him. Uh, another edge rusher, Emmanuel Agba for the uh, Miami Dolphins. We know that the Dolphins are struggling without their starting quarterback. If he comes back after this bye week they just had, maybe they can make a run in the AFC East, but it, I don't know. And perhaps they move on from Emmanuel Agba and the Bears can do something to go get him. He does have two sacks and 12 quarterback pressures this season. So that's something that they could be looking at. And then you also have Daniel Brunskill, an interior offensive lineman for the Tennessee Titans. Um, we already know that Ryan Bates is coming back after the uh, after the bye week, most likely. But you can never have too many too much depth on the offensive line. And the offensive line has gotten better since the first two games of the season. But again, you can't have too much depth. So what do you guys think? Should the Bears go after an offensive lineman or an edge rusher? It remains to be seen. But we know that Ryan Pose likes to take swings at the deadline. He did it with Chase Claypool, which was a miss. Then he did it last season with Montez Sweat. This season, the Bears do have to get a couple more depth pieces, and he does have two second round picks in this upcoming draft. So it's no, um, you know, it's, it's no question that he's going to try to do something because Ryan Poles likes to make moves. We just don't know what it's going to be. I'm not sure if it's going to be as big as a Max Crosby or a um, or a Miles Garrett, but if it is, woo, y'all watch out. That Bears defense will be historically good if they get one of those guys on the opposite end of Montez Sweat. So if you guys want to hear more about the Chicago Bears, swing on over to Chicago Bears Central with Hayes, C-Dub, Bobby, Steve-O, and myself popping in and out. Y'all already know how to do it. All right, moving right along. There's no much, not much news on the Cubs, but the Chicago White Sox are still in their coaching managerial search, and they have been given permission to interview two Texas Rangers coaches, one of them being the bench coach and offensive coordinator, Donnie Ecker, and Will Venable for the open managing position for the Chicago uh, White Sox. Uh, Venable emerged as a, uh, as a candidate last week, but Ecker's name has, has just come up in the last couple of days. Uh, both of them were on Bruce Bokey's staff when, or Bocce, however you say his last name, when the Rangers won the World Series just last season now ecker is a young guy 38 years old spent four seasons in the minor leagues before retiring becoming a high school coach then he worked his way up the ranks he worked with the st louis cardinals the los angeles a's the cincinnati reds the san francisco giants and now he's on the texas rangers um venable was a first base coach and then a third base coach for the chicago cubs 2018 to 2020 and then he was the assistant to theo epstein before going to texas so both of these guys are in line to um to coast the white Sox, and i don't know why they would want to coast the white Sox, but hey it is what it is it's a head coaching job it's a, it's a bump in pace so you want to go ahead and take care of business and get the jobs that come to you maybe they can help turn this white Sox organization around that remains to be seen but hey, if you guys want to hear more about the Chicago White Sox and the Chicago Cubs, go ahead and head over to Chicago White Sox and Cubs Central, hosted by your boy Big Kev. That's me, myself. And then we got Hayes in the building, too. We are separating the pages. It's going to be Chicago White Sox Central and Chicago Cubs Central going into the next season. But right now, the channels are still aligned. So go ahead and holler at us there. Uh, moving right along, man, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Chicago Sky again and Angel Reese again because my sworn enemy, I mean, it's not too many people that I'm thinking about if I see them in public that I would physically attack, but Jason Whitlock is one of them. This man has been hating black women and black people his entire career. He's built his entire platform on disrespecting black women. And this is what this man said. I mean, it's, it's, it's all everybody knows by now that Angel Reese went on post social media and answered some questions. And one of the questions was about 
if she's living above her means and so on and so forth. And she was saying how the WNBA salary doesn't even pay her bills. She only makes $78,000 a year, but she gets money and endorsements. People are up in arms about it. And Jason Whitlock, old flabby body self, decided to step in and say something about Angel Reese. This man who, who, who probably hasn't seen or touched a woman that he hasn't paid for up front in years says Angel Reese is really unlikable. It's hard for most men to dislike a woman who puts her butt on display everywhere she goes. She's got a pretty big one and a good one, but she's unlikable. What? Then he went on to say yesterday we got another example of her own on her own podcast complaining about how she can't afford an eight thousand a month, eight thousand dollar a month rent payment. It's the epitome of first world problems. It's the epitome of first world stupidity. It's the epitome of just Angel Reese being not being well thought out. So first of all, we'll address the second part of what he said. She did not. She was not complaining about how she can't afford eight thousand dollars a month rent payment. She was saying that she can afford eight thousand a month rent payment, but not because of her WNBA contract. It was because of her off the court efforts. She was letting people know that she's not living above her means, even though she doesn't make much money in the WNBA. She makes enough to be able to take care of herself elsewhere. That's not complaining. That's putting people on game, Mr. Whitlock. Second of all, it's it's hard for most men to dislike a woman who puts her butt on display everywhere she goes. She's got a pretty big one and a good one, but she's unlikable. No, sir. You're unlikable, and you got a pretty big butt yourself. It's just not a desirable one. That's terrible. It's a terrible take. Why do you get off on talking so much trash about black women? That's your entire platform, sir. You do know that a black woman gave birth to you, right? It was probably hard because you were probably 15 pounds, three ounces when she pushed you out, but it is what it is. Leave black women alone, my guy. I know they don't want nothing to do with you. That's why it's easy for you to talk crazy about them. I know. I know you don't know what cocoa butter smells like. So it's all good, my friend. But leave Angel Reese alone. She ain't thinking about you, fat boy. All right. That's it. I'm going to get up out of here. If you guys want to know anything else about the Chicago Sky, go ahead and follow Chicago Sky Central uh, with Hayes and, uh, and Steve-O. Uh, C-Dub does wonderful live calls over there. And then myself, uh, I pop the in and out. Uh, throughout the year. Oh, yeah, I did want to talk touch on uh, the Chicago Bulls. They do play their last game of the preseason tonight. Their roster is pretty much set after making uh, cuts, roster cuts yesterday. Uh, the first game of the season is on Wednesday versus the New Orleans Pelicans on the road. They play their first two games on the road before they come back home to play the Oklahoma City Thunder at the crib. Alex Caruso will be back in the United Center. But hey, go ahead and follow Chicago Bulls Central if you want any updates and news on the Bulls. And of course, for the Chicago Bears, follow Chicago Bears Central for any news and update over there. It's your boy, Big Bro. We're going to get it y'all next time. Peace. Jason Whitlock, you fat bastard. <laughs>